Girls, I want to thank you for taking this time to come here early in the morning. You're here early in the morning all the time anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. What time do you usually get up? So you usually get about 5.30, 5.40. 5.40. Yeah, what time do you usually go to sleep? About 10.30, 10, if I can. Okay. I try to, but my kids are both college students now. Okay. And they stay up till 2 or 3 in the morning, so it's kind of... A little hard to get to bed every night at, at before 11. What are, the, what are their ages? So they're, they're both 20. I have twins. Oh, you have twins? Yeah, yeah. Boys or girls? Two girls. Two girls. Yeah. Identical or fraternal? Fraternal. Are they as tall as you? So one is. One's 180, so six feet around. But you, you're over six feet. You're taller so than I'm, me. I'm six, six, yeah, well, I'm, I'm six, four, six, three, six, four. I've shrunk a little bit. Okay. So my daughter's, one is 180 and the other one's 168. Did they go to school at the American school? They went to ASIJ from middle school okay. through high school, yeah. Right. How long have you been in Japan? For, this is my 34th year. So how long have you been a member of time? Since t 2015, so only seven years. Okay. Yeah. Right. I don't know if you remember this, and this is going to be, the first time we met was at the Oakwood. You were there as when you were president, uh, yeah, president of okay. TAC, and you were there trying to recruit new members. Right, um, and that was the first time I think I, I, I met you. Is that right? Um, yeah. Okay, so, so I, I remember it well. It was at uh, the Rapunzel. I know the yeah, Rapunzel yeah, one, right? Yeah, right. right. Well, it was the, uh, kind of the good old days, but I think it that was, was just it was really uh, good. I think that was just during the temporary club. Um, I think we were still in the we were in this temporary yeah. club because it was around 2008, 2009. 2008, 2009, I think. Yeah. Exactly. I think it was 2009, probably. That, right. That, yeah. Right. Right, right. right. Because then we opened this in 2011. Yeah. So we were still going through some things then because we'd just gone through swine flu, and I think the Lehman shock. Lehman was shock. It was just after Lehman shock. Just yeah. after yeah. that, and a lot of guys were looking for things to do. Yeah. So tell me, when did you first come to Japan? So I came to Japan November '89. Was okay. uh, yeah, and I've been here ever since. So now you came I'm here. Would you come here? What was the reason for coming? I came. I took a course in. It was actually a religious studies course okay. in, in my third year of university on Japan. So it was, and this I grew up during the '80s. So Japan is all the rage, right? So right. that was high school and college were both '80s. Where'd you grow up? So I from California. Okay. Um, so where, where in California? Huh? Bay Area. Bay Area. Okay. Pleasanton, okay. California. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because I was thinking when you said you came here doing. Your college years, right? I was thinking maybe you're a Mormon, but you're not. No. No, no. no. And then you said California, you said eliminated <laughs> that. <laughs> okay. okay. So I grew up in Northern California. Right. I went to school at UC Santa Barbara. Okay. Um, and I was on the swim team at Santa Barbara. So it's right. uh, always been a, been a swimmer for, for most of my life. So that's right. yeah. But why is that? Because your father swam, your mother swam? Or? No, my brother swam. So I, I, you have two older brothers. I have two older brothers. Um, how, how far in age are you apart? So my oldest brother is. 61 now, so okay. that's what, so we're five and a, about five and a half years. Oh, so you guys are really close. Yeah, we're all close. Um, so it's 61, 60, and 50, well, I'll be 57 this year. But okay, yeah. and mom and dad, how are they doing? Mom and dad are both, they both passed away. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, how long ago was that? So father in 93 and okay. mother in 2006. Okay, did they stay together the whole time? Yeah. Yeah. Is that right? Oh. We can back up even back further if you want okay. to. And yeah, it, I would. it goes to kind of the why I like cross-cultural communication. Okay. Um, and culture has always been an interest of mine. Is my mom is Swedish, so uh, she was born and raised in Stockholm. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> father was uh, born in Canada, as I was saying okay. earlier, as we right. were chatting right. a little bit before this. So he was born in Canada, moved to California when he was one. So that's why I can't. But really where's his ethnic group? Where's he from? So ethnic Dutch. Group? So He's Dutch, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. so right. that's where the kind of the height comes from. Okay. Like I've got both <laughs> yeah, Northern right. European right, on both exactly. sides. So he was, grew up in San Jose, wanted to travel the world a little bit. So he, he went to dental school in California, be, was a, became a dentist, um, and then traveled to first England. And then one of his friends in England said, hey, you should go teach in Sweden for a year. So he went and taught dental school in Sweden, and that's where he met my mom. They were he both teaching dental, dental school. dental school. Yeah. They were both teaching. So my, both mom and dad are dentists. So and, but they didn't, they didn't spend their whole career teaching, did they? No, no. Okay. So he was there for a year and a half, met my mom, got married, had my oldest brother, and then moved to California. So he got his dental degree in California? In California, yeah. Where did he go to USC? Uh, he went to UCSF at the UCSF, San Francisco. Okay. So raised by dentists, which is why teeth was always the, the big thing. Big so thing, if anything okay. happened to your teeth, that's anything could happen to you. You could break a bone, you could break anything, it didn't matter. But as long teeth? as your teeth, yeah. So kind of a funny aside to that. Um, one day I was, I, I was 
uh, do you remember the pogo stick? Of course I, I do. Yeah, so yes. jumping up and down. So I was doing pogo stick, a little bit of an incline, and the, the pogo stick slipped, and I slammed down on my, on my chin. Right. And I, my, I think my parents were playing tennis close, and my friends ran over, got my mom and dad. The first thing my mom said, are his teeth okay? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. But how old were so you? The, how old were blood. you? Ah, I can't remember. remember. I was uh, I was probably eleven or twelve at the okay. time. Yeah, and she said so, your teeth. Are yeah, okay. our teeth are okay. Nothing else. You know, blood pouring down out of my mouth. Are teeth okay? Aside on that one, I had bitten through my tongue to save my teeth. So that was the that was why there was so much blood. Did but my mom is. Oh, your tongue can heal. <laughs> right, right, but your teeth. <laughs> your oh, teeth can't. Yeah. Some work right. yeah, your teeth can't. But your yeah, your 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 tongue's okay. Still, all the teeth are there. All the teeth. Um, and knock on wood, I don't have any cavities yet. So, <laughs> you, did you? You've had cavities. I've ne- nope, never had a cavity. You never had a cavity. Never had a cavity. What do you t- what do you attribute to that? I mean, not just good dental hygiene, but however, because fluoride used to be one of the things that stopped you from getting. Yeah. Do you have fluoride that you? So, well, actually, my parents weren't that big into this is the other funny thing so okay. it wasn't oh yeah you got to brush and floss and and it wasn't that kind of household um my dad was kind of old school he says yeah just brush your teeth before you go to bed that's fine and that's all i've ever done uh so it's just make sure that i brush my but i but do you do it really well do uh, uh, i don't know i'm probably not that good but um, do you check your teeth often uh, i used to i don't anymore i, I should go so to you the don't know if you more. have you don't know if you have a cavity or not there. um i hadn't until well during covid and and okay. sort of lockdown I, I i got worse at going to the dentist but right. um what about I, your brothers uh, so my oldest brother is the same as i am and middle brother with had a massive sweet tooth so he was the one that ate all the candy and you so we would go out trick-or-treating right. and basically dump all the candy out and he wouldn't be the one that kind of grabbed everything and said, yeah, okay, I know you guys don't like eating candy. <laughs> so yeah, the oldest brother and I, probably cookies and ice cream are the only two sweet and he likes pie, but I'm not, I'm not that much into pie. But So you basically don't I don't eat a lot, lot of, of sweets. Yeah, don't eat a lot of sweets. Do you drink alcohol? Yeah. Okay, what, wine, hard so, liquor? Uh, wine, beer uh, okay. is what I like the most. Right. Are you conscious of what you're eating when you're thinking about your tea? No. No. Okay, you don't think about no. it that way. But I did uh, for my kids. I think one of the, and this is whether this works or not, it, this is one of the things that probably I, I need to look up. My parents were always, it, my dad was a pedodontist, so tr- children's dentist. Um, so one of the things that they would come home and talk about at the, at the dinner table all the time is when they had to treat a, a, a one or a two-year-old for cavities, and, and this is when their, their primary teeth mm-hmm. were, were come, sorry, baby teeth. So when the baby teeth would come in, they were already rotting. Um, and a lot of that was because parents were giving their, their kids sweet juices and fruit juices. And that apparently, that acid is very, very bad. So I do remember very clearly when my kids were babies you and my mother-in-law juices. wanted to give them juice before they went to bed, that I was, that was the one thing that I kind of drew the line at. Right. And neither of my kids have cavities. So whether that was the thing or not, I don't know. And my wife and, and does have cavities, but um, neither of my kids actually have, have any cavities. And, and that was the only thing that I, I kind of drew the line at was don't give the girls. Because you knew yeah. what the... What the that, well, that was the one thing that got drilled into me mm-hmm. as, a, as a child. That's interesting. That, that, and because I remember very clearly that that was our dinner conversation. Mm-hmm. Great. Yeah. Most, most kids are talking about you know, hey, what'd you do this day? And my parents, because they worked together. So that they had an office together. Um, and so they would talk about... And they about, kept that all the way through. They kept, yeah, they kept that all the way through. So my, my mother actually didn't become a dentist in the U.S. because she would have had to go through dental school again at the time. Okay. Since then, the laws have changed, and um, you don't have to do that. But American dentists could go overseas and still practice, but any outside could not come to the U.S. Mm-hmm. They would have to go through dental school again at that time. And, and again, that's changed, but... Okay. Um, and maybe my mother pioneered some of that. I'm not sure, but did uh, your father have his own office? I yeah, mean, his own so place? he had his own office. Okay. Um, and he, because he was a pedodontist, all my friends went to him and right. said, "Yeah, I go to your dad." For yeah. it. So you, are, you already <laughs> had it in that way. <laughs> so was that? your brother? Did your brothers? Anyone else become a dentist? No, none of us did. Dentistry at the time uh, was going through large changes, and that was they had to put gloves on and a whole bunch of other things because of, of again, the AIDS mm-hmm. uh, epidemic and mm-hmm. some of the other things. And he didn't like that. He was very old school in that in that okay. sense. He liked the the touch the and, touch, and right, being. Yeah. Um, so he didn't like having a sort of put on the protection. He thought it was, especially as a pedodontist, um, you know, my dad 
everybody thought my dad looked like Mr. Rogers and acted okay, like right, him. So right, it was, right. he had the sweater and everything I else. See, so it was, he could put people at ease when, mm -hmm. when the kids would come in crying because they didn't want to go to the dentist. He was very good at just calming them down and, and talking to them and, and making them understand what he was going to do. And so he, everybody liked going, and that was the reason that they liked going to my dad. Because of that, it was kind of, with all those changes, he didn't want any of us to go through dental school because he thought, Oh, it'd be the, only the, get worse. The, it's it, not going to yeah, get better. It's not gonna, yeah, it's only going to get worse. It's I not going to get better. Yeah. See, so, oldest brother is in uh, real estate, so he okay. does uh, retirement home development in California. Okay, That's, and that then, should be a big market. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a big market. Your um, second brother, what's he doing? And so the middle brother is a teacher okay. um, at a private school in San Mateo. Okay, so. and now you are? So right now, currently, I'm, I'm doing consulting, okay. um, so working with uh, some friends, companies, and, and other things at, at trying to help their sales and developing the sales team. Right. Um, and your wife isn't more. working? And my wife is not working at the time. Okay. So, so kids are, um, they're, they're 20 now, as, mm -hmm. as, again, as we mentioned. Are and they close? So they're very close. Yeah. They're okay. very close. It, and, and I think it, it's, it's a shame and, and kind of a blessing at the same time. Unfortunately, with COVID, uh, when they were juniors at, uh, in high school, that's where it came through. And junior, senior year is usually when you're most active. When we were talking about like, TAC being a social club. Mm -hmm. And nobody could go out. And it's really oh. sad. So they became even closer because Which it was just them at home. Exactly. Basically. Exactly. And good and bad. They had you know, always a friend. But they got it over they, they always had they always have a built in friend, which is which is good. Um, so partner in crime as I used to uh, That's right. Because they would That's right. uh, But you were that way with your brothers, weren't you? So I was very close to my brothers. I still am. Right. We're, we're, we're um, I was kind of the youngest. Well I was Then to sports wise down school, were you more academic or were you more physical? So I was academic until my junior, well, actually my sophomore year in high school. Mm -hmm. um, what subjects so did you like? I, before that, and the reason, we, okay, were, we just started talking about it, so I'll, yes. I'll back up to that again. Right, sure. So my brothers were, so you asked me why I started swimming. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> right, right, I did. And this is, this, is, this is why. I started swimming because I was doing, I, I grew up with the two older brothers and, and, and always trying to get better than they were at something, but could never do that. Mm -hmm. So I would try basketball. I was terrible. We had a basketball court outside in, in our in our yard. Yeah, just and where I, you are. I, oh, they would crush me because they were always <laughs> and they loved taller. To do too, right? Oh yeah, they were always taller and than they I was, and they were always bigger. Strength, and they just right, right. swat just the ball away right. and just laugh at me. And and so basketball was I, I, tr I was traumatic. And of course I, it was for you. I've got yeah they for had, them. They oh, they the were, loved it. They yeah, they loved it. And then they just slam it down and go yes. Um, and you kept on going back my, for more. My oldest Wait, did you ever did you ever ask cute. for dad or anything or say, hey, come oh, on? Yeah, he would come in, but he, 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 he again, the same thing. Did he thing. slam he, you he down did, too? Well, he, <laughs> he was the youngest of eight, so that was another. Oh, so, so but, but he, did he identify with you? He, he would identify with me, but right. he would also, uh, he very much so, he loved having three boys. So he would just get in there and do and the just same just go for thing. it. Oh, forget and, all about and, you. And you still oh, yeah. be on the sideline. He's still on the, yeah, he'd start <laughs> slamming the ball away. And so my oldest brother, very competitive, still to this day, and I've got a story to that okay. one too. All right. Um, extremely competitive. So he just has to, everything is a drive. And so basketball, soccer, baseball, everything that you do as kids, he would always excel and try and excel. Um, and he was a swimmer too, so he swam. And I always listened to his times, and I'm like, great, yeah, no. I think, well. That's five, five and a half years, right? So there's, there's enough, well, four But and he's half. also taller than you too. He's taller, yeah, and bigger. Okay, um, right. The, the four and a half year difference is, is starts to obviously large. So when I was a freshman in high school, he'd already graduated and started at, at, uh, at university. Um, but I went through swimming and so did my middle brother. And, but my middle brother, because my middle brother's the tallest, he's the, he's the one that's 6'8". Okay. So he's 203 centimeters. So he's 10 centimeters taller than I am. He was, he did basketball, but then he started the same reason. He went into volleyball because the older brother couldn't. So he wanted to differentiate himself because they're only a year apart. So he went into volleyball university uh, in the end. Um, but he was a swimmer too. So he was the one that took me because my parents didn't want to get up at, for practice in the morning and take us. So he would drive me, the two of us would go to swim practice. And, and so that's where I really started to, to swim. Um, and then I started to excel in swimming. I'm going, wait, I can finally beat my brothers. And so that was the, the one sport that I was able to. And you actually did beat them. Oh yeah, I crushed them. Oh, that's what I'm talking <laughs> about. And you, and you loved it, huh? So I, not only did I crush them, I ended up getting a scholarship to university. As a result of, of it. Yeah. So 
Lucky for that you, brothers yeah. like that. Oh yeah, but they they didn't understand some of the other dynamics that happened because of that. Um, they thought I got everything because I was the youngest. Well, dad, no. mom, dad give you everything because you're the youngest. I said, wait a minute, I had a scholarship, guys. <laughs> this is a little bit different. Right, right. Um, so yeah, swimming that's scholarship. Good. That to, was to, good. To, so that's that's how I and that's that's where I continued to swim, um, and then tried for the '88 Olympic trials. Um, so the Seoul Olympic trials just missed it. Oh really? But yeah. Oh wow. So I, I I did finally get something that I was I was good at. That's That's beautiful. See, yeah. I just got through listening to something recently that said pick the hard that you want to because everything in life is hard. Right? right? Getting up early is hard. Yeah. Staying in bed late is hard. <laughs> so pick the hard that you want because some of them have rewards at the end of them. Yeah. And yours was beating your brothers. That was hard. But look at the reward you got as a result of it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and, and still paying dividends. And still paying. Yeah. And still, and so, yeah, really. So, Are uh, your daughters yeah. swimmers too? They're not. And They're I not. tried. <laughs> to, not. I, no, I tried to push them into that, but they, they um, neither really. They didn't uh, take so to they, it. They play tennis, okay. um, and that's the, the sport that they do. They have that's the height sport too. So they, yeah, so they liked, and because it, cause they can play the two of them, they also like it. So that's, that's another reason they, and so they've always stayed at tennis. They tried ice skating. They tried a whole bunch of other different sports. It's Never, good to do that. It, well, the balance for ice skating was fantastic, um, that they learned balance. And so it, that carried into, and as Everything you said, else, that's right. so that carried on to a lot of the other sports. No, so what, what gave you the interest to come here? What yeah, we, we were talking here? about that sort of yes. so took, uh, The third year, I took that religious studies course in Japanese uh, culture and history and it was a religious studies course but it was really about the history of Japan okay. and it was the professor's last quarter he was retiring after that and you could just sense how uh, much he loved Japan and everything was was it was you guys have to go and experience it yourself and that really sank in I did I had no idea what I wanted to do it was Third year, the only thing I, wa I knew I wanted to do was try for the Olympic trials. No idea what I wanted to do scholastically. No idea what I wanted to do after that. I was in political science just because I loved politics. What are you going to do with a poli-sci major? It was, of course, the major statement. And took that Japanese course, and I said, okay, you know what? Swedish was always in my house, but my mom never taught us Swedish. But you could understand some of it. I could understand a lot of it. Okay. But the nicest part is it, it did open up culture in another world. There's a world out there. It's not just America, guys. Right, yeah. right. Um, so we always had friends coming in, relatives coming in. Um, and one of the, the funny things is during the, the ABBA years, we would get Ab ABBA albums from our, our cousins right, 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 and yeah, right. aunts and uncles in, in, in Sweden. And that was it. So, hey, another ABBA album. Great. <laughs> um, with, <laughs> that was the, the one export that they had uh, at that time. Uh, that's that They felt that, hey, everybody knows ABBA. So we yeah. all got and it was, of course, LPs at that time. Right. Understood that there was a culture out there, took Swedish as a freshman at university, but because I already knew a lot of it, it was kind of boring, okay. uh, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, it was great for vocabulary, but everything else was kind of uh, uh, Swedish. So I, I, I was kind of flailing in terms, and I, had, I knew I had to take a language. Um, but I was flailing in terms of what that language was going to be. Mm -hmm. And always had an interest in history, and, and World War II was kind of a, 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 um, another interest that I had. Your father was too young to be in World War II. No, he was, he was 18 in, at the end. At the so, end of World so War II. So he caught the end. But eight, the youngest did of he eight, get it? Did he go to World War II? He never he went. Did. He never went. He, he was which is young. also why he so wanted yeah. to travel. Okay, of course. Um, and, and so, because he didn't get to travel anywhere during... So he missed the, all the war. He didn't get to do any, he didn't have to go in the service at all. No, he joined at 17. He joined the Navy at 17 because in those days you could graduate early. Right. Um, right, right. So he was, in, uh, he was 17 and a half mm -hmm. and he could enlist. So he enlisted. Okay. Um, and they sent him to, of all places, Pleasanton, where I ended up growing up. <laughs> but so he only stayed in for two years. So he stayed in for two years, yeah. Two years um, and, that's, and then leveraged that to go to the university and everything else. Right. So the GI yeah, Bill. Good, and, and so it, it did. Uh, again, it reward him, and, right. and, and, but it did leave him with, he joined the Navy because he thought he'd be able to travel, and he was never able to travel, and that's why he ended up going to Sweden in the end. Culture was always something that was in the house. And that made you want to come here? And that made me want to, well, first study because Japanese. Of, because of the doc, yeah, because, because of the because professor, professor you had, yeah, right? Because of the professor. He gave me the, the sort of the bug to, right. to study Japan. Um, but you hadn't studied the language at all. I had zero. 
So I started out at zero. I had, you came I over nothing. here without any language at all? So I took two years at university. So that was the, the fourth and fifth year. I went five years because okay. I, um, I redshirted my fourth year to, so to and redshirting is probably something that not, <laughs> not everybody, everybody would know, right? Yeah, yeah. so you, take a, you have five years to, to do four in the sports. Mm -hmm. um, and most football, if you're football scholarship, you take it off the first year. So you're bigger when you can do it. Swimming, you kind of, usually most swimmers will take off the Olympic year um, and then train yes. outside. So it's, it's, it's a different, uh, whatever the, the, the Olympic year fits mm -hmm. in, they'll take off that year and train for whatever they do. So I, that's, that's what I did. And we had a team of nine, oh, no, uh, sorry, 11 that was always, that was training. So we had a team of 11 that was training for the Olympic trials. Nine made it. Right, of course. So that's, that's where the nine right. comes from. I was unfortunately the, one of the two that didn't. Uh, we just, both of us just barely missed. But one of them actually, one of our friends made it all the way to the Olympics. So uh, we had one teammate at the 88 Olympics. So but then you came over. You and then came, came over came in 89. Over, you came over in 89. Um, yeah, I could. But with the intention to do what? To study Japanese for a year. Where? I enrolled in a Japanese school. Okay. Um, so I went to In the, Tokyo? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it doesn't exist anymore, but it was right. the Hiro Japanese School. I remember it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Hiro Nihongo Gakko. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So that's, that's where I, so TAC was always kind of, I met a lot of TAC members that were walking around Hiro, and so I, I've been to the club several times. So people, you have. So throughout my career, so I've been to every leave. club. Yeah, so I, I mean, I, every, so the, 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 many club the old club, yes, uh, the temporary oh, you went to club. The, and right. I, so I've been to events at each club. Okay, so you know um, the three through, clubs, Through right. all the years, and then finally 2015 joined. First you knew about the club, and you came here. I came here, yeah. And did you, th you had no girlfriend back in the States? Uh, I did. Okay, and we, she, we, she, was, uh, she was still at university. Okay. Um, so we decided to try the long distance, but in those days, the long distance doesn't, didn't always work out. That's right. Um, and then... You uh, said you came again in 89? So, yeah, November 89. 89, okay. I, you never went back? I, no, I haven't. I've never gone back. Um, I mean, when you say, when I say go back, you haven't stayed in the States. You haven't been out of Japan more so than the longest, month. More than three months three is, months, is okay, the longest right, trip that I've taken, right. yeah, okay. take, taken back. Right. Uh, back. Since 89. Since 89. Um, How, what year did you get married? So I got married in 95. Okay. So we've been married What's for, it? yeah. Um, right. What is that, 27, 28 like years? That. 28 27 years, years. 28 years, yeah. We've been married for 27, 27 this is year 28, yeah. yeah. 28 years, yeah. yeah. Let's go into how you met your wife. Let's get to yep, that Yep, it's, it's getting there. So I, I, again, studied two years, Japanese, came here, could ask directions, um, but I had no idea what the answer was. So hearing-wise, well, this is in Japanese. So when I first got here, uh, you say, hey, how do I get to the station, right? And they, they blah, and you, you know, you get the whole thing. So I understood, okay, you go down to the corner and you take a left. <laughs> That's the only kind of thing I got out of that whole conversation. So take, right. walk to the next corner, take a left, make sure the other person isn't watching, <laughs> ask the next person, right, and get right, the next right, step right, to, right. to getting to the station. Because right. um, there were no phones those days. Uh, right. Nobody had a, a right. Google map to get them That's anywhere. Right. Um, and so getting lost was actually part of the fun of, of walking around the stations. Anyway, so you came here. So came what was here. your first job? So the first job was teaching English. Okay. So I would go to school in the morning and then teach English in the afternoon. And you had a small little tatami mat room? So I was, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so at the beginning. With your height and everything. I bet you hit the wall. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was, I'd hit, you, the, I'd hit the door. I, I was like a unicorn. Time. Listen, yeah. I look like yeah. a, see, so you're oh, taller, yeah. Yeah. but I look like a unicorn after I got out of the service and stayed here. I just could not stop. <laughs> mine, would hit, mine would hit me <laughs> right on my yeah, forehead. Yeah. And I would say, every time I'd say, w it was like stubbing your toe. Yeah. Why can't what I, I learn? Why can't I learn duck? <laughs> why can't I just learn duck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Or you come up you know, too fast and, boom, and, yeah, you, hit and, right and you hit it right there. Well, you're right. Either right. here yeah. or here. Yeah. I was getting yeah. hit every time. All right, so how long did you do that? When did you so finally I, get out of the uh, English so teaching? So I got out of the English teaching. Um, I taught for a year and a half. Uh, and then I went back for the three months. That was the longest stretch. Um, and during that time, Broke up with my girlfriend. Uh, oh, at, so that was what was kind of keeping so you that was tied a, to a it. little bit tied to tied going to back. It, right. By that time, okay, all right. Well, now I'm going to go back to Japan and really try to learn the language. Okay. So I had gotten conversational, but I think as we all know, there are a lot of different layers to Japanese. So there's the conversational layer. These there's the you finally start learning the polite form. Then there's the business and everything else that comes along. And I think every language is the same way. And it sort of it all fit into the sort of the cross-cultural communication as well. And learning those different steps and what you needed to do. The next step for me was joining a Japanese company. 
So and I, you wanted I, to. I wanted to. You didn't want to be with a foreign company? No, okay. I wanted to join the Japanese Because you wanted this Japanese, I, I wanted you wanted the to make sure total immersion that oh, I was, I was able to speak So how'd that Japanese. go for you? Uh, it ended up actually going very well. Um, so I, I taught English at an intensive freshman orientation English program uh, for Taisei Construction Company. And it was just one week and there were 35 teachers that were there because it was a mat that was uh, 91. So the bubble had popped, First, right. but they were still for, especially the construction industry, still had orders for the next four years that were during the bubble. So they, they were still floating. They were, they, well, it's bubble time. It's, and, and so it's still very, very bubbly. And they hired 1,200 new employees that year. And that was probably the, I think that was the largest class that they had. So no, the next year was larger. They, were, they ran all of the construction through one week of intensive English, and I was one of the teachers. So one of the 35, out of that 35, only three spoke Japanese, and the, the bucho of the Human Resource Development Department didn't speak in English. So he asked the organizers to find the three teachers. Were you one of them? That, I was one of them, yeah, that spoke mm -hmm. Japanese. Mm -hmm. So it was me and two others, and we were talking to, to him. And the other two already had jobs that they were going to go to after the intensive finished. So they were both moving into something else. And so the only one that didn't have a job out of those three was me. And so he, uh, he says, hey, are you interested in coming to work for, for Taisei? And I said, yeah, why not? That's what I want to do. That's, and and Taisei, very, very, again, construction industry, mm -hmm. very, very domestic, right? But they wanted to become international. They're top three, right? So they were putting a little bit of a push in, in getting more of an international focus on things. Sakata uh, um says, hey, Nils, why don't you come in? We'll do an interview, see how you, you, you like it. Um, and then if, if you like it, you can, you can join. So went to an interview and got the job. What was your position to be? A regular okay. employee, because it, it, I was... But did they pay you well they, enough for do? I mean, did it, well, did it change your lifestyle Yes, all? it did. So okay. th there are two things. So they put me in charge of all of the international seminars. So all of the, because the Human Resource Development Department is in charge of all the different seminars. That, How often the, did they the, have these seminars? All the, the employee training. Okay. They're going constantly. In Uotta, we had a, um, a facility. It looked like a massive hotel with, with classrooms and everything else. So you would go down to Yugawara and stay there and, and, and do your two, three, or one week training and then come back and work. And so it was, and I was in charge of all the international. So anything to do with English studies, any, with, with foreign language studies uh, besides English, um, anything to do with negotiation styles, cross-cultural communication, I was in charge of everything. All of a sudden I had all this <laughs> responsibility kind of put on me, which is great. And a salary that, that kind of, because it's still bubbly, the salary was, was good. And then the bonus was massive for a 24 year old. And so it took me another 10 years to get to the same point in salary that I got those three years at Tyson. Because of how because much of the, the bonuses. Because, because the, the bonuses. Yeah, because of the bonuses. Um, so that's where it, I met my wife. It is to a certain extent. Okay, you uh, met so my she wife, was working at Tyson? She was working at Tyson right across from me. She was okay. sitting right across from me. And so we started talking. So I started having lunch together every day but with a, with a group of friends and then it developed into uh, going out later on because um, she had no idea about thinking about marrying a foreigner at all oh no still to this day does not so, like but how did her parents react to you since I mean you were really in there so yes um, <laughs> <laughs> her mom and her uh, uh, was okay how uh, many children had she had just one so my oh, wife's so, an only child yeah. and mom was okay yeah I mean I've known her for uh, what 30 some odd years now. So it's uh, very good. We have a great relationship. So I had a fantastic relationship with the mother-in-law. Um, always joking. Always, she likes to drink as well. So it's, that makes it fun That's too. Good. So it's good. we have happy hours. Well, she was fine mainly because I, I think I spoke Japanese and there was never any, oh, I have to learn English. I was always trying to learn more about Japan. And I, I met her grandfather as well because so, he was the, the the man of the house, because uh, my wife's mom had moved back into yeah, her house, her house okay. and that's where my wife had grown what about up. Her, so. What about her mother? Uh, was living there too, so okay. that, yeah. Um, and so the grandfather was fantastic, so I, I learned a lot of different he things was, from he him. He was ready to take you under his wing. He, he did, he did, and I, I, you know, more power to him, because he could have said, oh, you know, most uh, definitely. Gaijin, yeah, very easily. Get, get out of here, but didn't. And it was, it was always very nice. Where were they from, Tokyo? Uh, from Tokyo, yeah. Okay. yeah. That makes a difference too, because they weren't they weren't out in the country. No, 
No. They weren't isolated, so yeah. they had already seen a lot of foreigners. Yeah. They'd already known they exist and they were around. Yeah, but I, I mean, you remember those days in 86 and 89, same thing, where you were walking down the street, probably even... I still think <laughs> that being a, a foreigner here puts us all together. It and, does. And, and, and well, just, you have something in and common. Not, yeah. Because so that, that, you're not Japanese. No, you're not Japanese. That's the one thing that's <laughs> common. You have common you're not, and never will be. And never will be. It doesn't no matter, matter how, how much you try to say exactly. you, know, you could be David Spector. <laughs> David. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a good friend of mine. He's going to be here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's nice. not going to happen. Yeah, exactly. So the sooner mm. you learn that one, the better off you're going to be. The better off you are for Japan. Right. And that, that's, that's probably right. the biggest nugget of, right. of knowledge. As soon as you get over that, you're <laughs> never going to be Japanese, you're fine. You could be the last samurai. It's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Tom Cruise, yeah, yeah wait a minute. No. And you can, you can become Japanese too. Yeah. But you'll still never, you're be, still Japanese. never be Japanese. You're Japanese. Yeah. Because because you don't. Have you ever thought about doing that? Changing your system? I, I have. I have. Um, and more recently, about even uh, really uh, thinking about yeah. maybe I, I have you have no intention to leave. No, I'm I'm, I'm pretty much here, I. and that's that. When and this is the mother-in-law story again. And this is we're having happy hour one day, and, and and mom goes, "All right, I've got a spot for you in our uh, in our grave. So you're you're yeah you're you're covered." <laughs> She's being serious, and, and yeah, and that was I, whether it was because that we you know, we had turned to sort of that conversation about what to do afterward, and that just popped up. I don't know. Um, I haven't followed that up. Obviously, <laughs> I haven't. But that was like, wow, uh, that's serious. Yeah, that's yeah. Thank you. Um, mm. That was that's and, that means a lot. Yeah, that, yeah, it means a lot that you've you've actually you now part of your family. brought me into the into the family that much to say that to me. That's beautiful. Um, yeah, thank you very much. It was was my that's the way I came away from that that, mm. that evening. How old is your mother in law now? Seventy she? something. Oh, she's still young. Yeah, she's yeah. young. She's young. Yeah. And to think that way, that's beautiful. So yeah, that's really nice. Yeah. So and that was probably ten years ago. So that was even yeah. Mm -hmm. What well, to me, Niels? What is one of the most challenging times you've had since you've been here, and how did you overcome that challenge? Probably most challenging times that I had was when I was brought on to be the country manager of a, of a, a U.S. company, and this is my first foreign firm. So I'd gone through different, so I'd, after Taisei, I went to Seiko Instruments, so Seiko Group. Then I started my own company, but still sort of consulting with Seiko and doing some other things, kept that going. And in 2007, Lehman and a whole bunch of other things were, were starting, um, and the Gerson Lerman Group is, is, is the name of the company. Uh, they were looking for somebody to start the office here in Japan. And the Gerson Lerman Group is, is a, a network of experts. When clients who are hedge funds, mutual funds, private equity firms are looking for expertise, they go to the Gerson Lerman Group. The Gerson Lerman Group finds an expert that can talk about the subject that they want to talk about, so that can bring them up and give them the knowledge. That industry did not exist in 2007. So it existed elsewhere in, again, in the US, and, and the Gerson Lerman Group was the first one to, to start this. So they, they, they started the industry, and it, for most uh, Americans and, and, and Europeans, it was a very easy choice to go, hey, you're gonna pay me for what I know? All I have to do is talk? I'm in, sign me up. So they thought it would go well everywhere. And in Japan, even if you have 35, as we know, 35 years of expertise, they'll be very, very, oh, I don't, no, I'm not an expert in that. I, I don't know. And so getting the Japanese to, one, join, because we would, you could say, hey, we'll pay you for your time. It's, oh, no, I, I, I don't know if I could give enough, again, for your client to be happy. I, I'm not sure I could, I could, I could you know, provide enough information or, or you know, be the person that they want to talk to. So overcoming that challenge used cross-cultural communication, used Japanese, so it used everything that I had learned to one, I had to, com I had to communicate this to New York. Right. So I had to explain mm. about Japan, I had to explain about the Japanese and the way that they feel so that I could get them to buy into what we needed for Japan to be successful. How long had you had the job for you to do this? So this was right away, this is immediately. But how, how long did they give you to get this off the ground? Oh, they, they didn't tell me how much they were gonna give me, but they wanted results so right, away, right away, obviously. Oh yeah, you, you could tell because it worked everywhere else, right, right. away. Right. And they expected so it to So they expected it to, to, to be the same here. So how long did it take you? To finally start to get people to join and, and to find and to, and to explain. The, the start was easier. So I was a little bit lucky because getting the low-hanging fruit to join 
was easier because you could you could go to different groups, ACCJ, and you can go to different. Um, and so I was using leveraging some friends. That's because English was was the language, but getting the Japanese to join took showing up a month after month after month at these these events for them to finally start to trust you and, and open it. But it was still cold calling, a lot of cold calling. It took me six months to finally start to break through. Luckily, I had enough trickle coming in. But did you have this, were you doing this by yourself? I, there, so there were three of us that, three of that, that, that were, but different industries. So I was tech, media, Wait, telecommunications. Were you three equal? As far as what you had to do, or did, were you over? No, I was. I was still overseeing. Over, yeah, overseeing yeah. them. So but you brought in two other guys to help you out. But well, it started. They brought <coughs> me in to be the. So there were already two working there, but they didn't. They were having the same problems. Right. Um, so it was me to try to change. So, really, be the communicator with New York was also my job. So how do we get successful in I Japan? See. Was really what they put on me, and, and they didn't give me a lot of time. So um, it, it really. That was the most challenging in terms of bringing all of the skills that I had done. And change management was another one that I uh, had gone through different companies. So I had to change Taisei, I had to change SII, I had to right. change. So you had some again. experience. So I had experience in you that. Had experience and, and, in that. And bringing things up and, and trying to right. get things across. So that's, which is another reason they hired me. But it was more about really just this is an opportunity for you. This is the way that you need to think about it. This is understand that you may not feel like you have the experience. So there are different ways that I tried to tweak the message. And, and, and in the end, after six months, we finally started getting the message that got through. Mm -hmm. And not that it got a lot easier, because we still had to, every single one was kind of a... A, a, a new one. Yeah, I'm not even pitching a product. I'm going to pay you, was the, <laughs> the way that I used you to... You couldn't do any more. Stand up there and call money in your hand. Here, exactly. here, take here. It. Yeah, here's, take it. Here's some money. Here's right. 30,000. Take it. Yeah, Listen, no, just no, take no, it. no, no, no. I'm too sure suspicious. No, exactly. no, no, no. Yeah, well, that was it. They're too suspicious. You're too, too, too good suspicious. to be true. Too, too good, good to be true. true. You're going to pay me. You're going to pay me to do something I do. Right. Exactly. To that I do already. <laughs> Does that company still exist? Yes. Um, are they doing well now? Or so is it starting they, to decline? Yeah. Well, they're, they're in Japan, they, they, uh, they declined a little bit, but they're, they're right. keeping. Um, and, a, and a Japanese startup came in in, in, in 2013. <laughs> so um, you can do it. Did, did really well. Said, took. Um, what I was doing and, and, and sort of the, the, and brought it in more of a minute mainstream, uh, whereas GLG well, was they could do that. And you could. Th there. There's something they could do that you'd never be able to do because you're not Japanese. Japanese. Exactly, and it goes back to that. But and even then, right. I had hired a, a lot of Japanese. But the company so what, itself so is not Japanese. That's right. Exactly. That's right. And so there was always something that we didn't do. That yeah. yeah. Why you? Why do you want to? Why yeah. do you want our help? <laughs> you know, why are you going to pay me? Exactly. There was always something. That's that, always that, there. That's yeah. interesting. It, what is? What's the? What's the wildest thing you've done since you've been here in Japan? The one thing that still I go back to in terms of you know, why did I stay in Japan? What was it that that sort of enamored me about this country and this? Before you this. got married, you're talking now. This, yeah, this is yeah. before you got married. Because before you got of married, of course, after getting married and having kids, that's the reason. Yeah, well, that's the, that's the reason to continue right. to stay. But um, <laughs> so I was staying in a in, a, in Nihon Zutsumi, which is way out near um, Asakusa. Minami Senju is the is the station. Uh, so you walk from Minami Senju, and this is 90. I had f met a friend. Uh, and so the two, he said, "Hey, Nils, you can you can stay at my apartment while you're looking for your own." Um, so I, I, I what stayed. happened to your apartment? I never really had an apartment. So I started at a friend's place that that I called him two days before I got here, um, and said, "Hey, Masa, can I, I stay at your place for?" This is way back in November '89. So oh, two, okay. two days before I arrived in Japan, I called Takizawa-san and said, "Hey, can I?" And you knew him from where? I knew him from y university. So okay. this is it. So, okay, can I stay at your place? And he had a six tatami mat place. And so, which, welcome to Japan. Um, so I needed, I knew I needed to get out of there very quickly. <laughs> so I, I met somebody else at, at, at another job teaching English that I was in. And he said, hey, look, I've got a space. If you want it, you can, you can live in my spot until you, yeah, uh, until you find a place. And he was working day, um, nights, uh, and so that we never really had a lot of time together. And when we did, we just got. So he was gone, and when I was at, at there, he was gone. And when, when, you know, when, when he was there, I was gone. So it kind of worked out well. Um, but it's Nihon Zizumi. So I'm, I'm coming back, and that's where they had the daily workers, construction workers, would all gather there, and the cars would drive up. 
uh, again, it's end of bubble, end of the bubble, but still kind of bubbly. Um, cars would drive up, and they would pick people out uh, and say, "Okay, you, 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 you get in," and they would all get into the van and drive off to the construction site. And that's kind of the, the and anybody that wasn't selected that day, they had nothing else to do. They didn't have a lot of money because they were sending all the money back to their their families uh, in the countryside. And they had a there was a, a, a kotatsu in the park uh, that was right there, and there was a lot of alcohol next to it. So they would just start drinking at six in the morning, get drunk, and then just pass out. And that was their day until the next morning when they would try to get hired again. And I would be coming home from Rapungi at first train, so it's six o'clock <laughs> in those days. So I still hadn't. Uh, I mean, Rapungi was the only place that really spoke English at that time, and I hadn't learned a lot of Japanese yet. So I'm. Coming back from Rapungi one night, the daily workers that didn't get hired that day are all sitting around the kotatsu drinking, and I'm obviously they realize that hey, this guy's been out all night because I you know I get bleary eyed. I called me over, uh, what guys? Koi, sorry. Okay, so I, I sat down and I started pouring me drinks, and and so I, I learned a lot of sort of guttural Japanese, and, and and they were very very nice, even though again this, they're from real. You knock out countryside Japan, right? And but they were still very, very friendly. And when I tried to get up that day and and, and give them some money to buy the next round, that was the worst thing I could have done. done. Oh yeah, a bit worst in yeah. terms of they're like, no, do you? You're the guest, right? What do you mean? We called you over because right, 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 we knew, right. yeah, you, you right, <laughs> right, right, right. not being Japanese, not because uh, right, right. we wanted to sort of. We found another drunk basically, uh, <laughs> and and and. We wanted you to come in and join us, and so no, we can't. This is fantastic. I I had learned about that in, in my courses in, in in university, but never that was the first time I've experienced firsthand. Mm -hmm. I mean, from not people that were trying to you know know a foreigner so that right. they could say yeah. I'm very international. No, these are they they, they, they could they care, care less. less. Yeah, right. You're just another person They're coming by. Just another guy that <laughs> was walking by that they wanted to you know again right. share the culture with. And I, I this is amazing. So that part of it was what kept me, but I, I kind of, in terms of crazy, in terms of trying to be Japanese, which I'll never be, but just learning enough to know, okay, so these guys won't accept something, but they might accept something if they don't know it's coming from me. So I actually went to a liquor store, bought an ishobing sake, uh, nice, mm -hmm. made sure that everybody was asleep. Then when I was going to, to sort of work to teach English that day, I just put it down next to the kotatsu. And just took off, oh. made sure that nobody was watching. Made sure just and that was that you know set it down, walked away. Didn't want thanks, didn't want anything else. Kind of walked by, sort of out out Pretty that sure. that night. Yeah, well, well, actually the next day and, and looked at the corner of my eye and it was out there. It was out there. there. And it was you know basically they were like, ah, look somebody put this <laughs> somebody yeah. brought that one. They they you could tell that they were kind of looking at it, trying right, to figure right, it out. Right. But they, yeah, they, they but that the the. Anonymous gift, of was course, accepted. Was, was accepted. Um, as long as they knew it didn't come from you. But yeah. that also very Japanese, right? Just they don't, don't want to, uh, you're the guest, you're the, the, and that has been something that I've loved about Japan mm -hmm. and lear wanting to learn more language, wanting to learn more cultural, wanting to, that's the, the part that's kept. Niels, if you could go back in time, knowing what you know today, and meet the younger Niels to advise him, what age would you be and what advice would you give yourself? So I would go back to the Taisei Niels and say, get into finance at that time. Um, and the reason is because everybody I know in that area, and especially a lot of friends that are here, <laughs> are in that industry from that time. And I would have liked to a lot met a lot of the guys that now are, I, are, are very, very good friends earlier. And that's kind of the, the one thing probably, the wife, kids, that whole thing, I, I, you know, I wouldn't want to change that, so I would have wanted to met uh, my wife, uh, even though she probably thinks I never would have worked at Taisei. <laughs> that's true, that's true. <laughs> but that's okay, that's a different story. That, I'll let her tell her story. Mm -hmm. But for me, I, I, I would have wanted that. But after that, I, 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 that's the trajectory that. So I, I, I got my MBA in, in 99, 2001, mm -hmm. and I probably would have gone sooner to, to, to do that one. If you got an MBA. Yeah, if I, if I could go back and advise myself. Because um, I, I do enjoy finance, but I never really got into that part of it. I, I would tell myself, go into finance. Oh, that's a good, that's good, that's good. So, a little bit yes. earlier. Then one, one last thing I want to ask you is, aren't you going to say something to your nephew? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk, say something to him. So, you, got, you got a camera right there, you can yeah. talk to him. But your, your nephew is 
So, uh, Nephew currently is uh, an influencer um, mm -hmm. and uh, does a lot of these uh, sort of podcasts. Again, podcasts this is YouTube. My, son, my son gets mad at me for calling this a podcast because I, it, I it's focus more on the it video is, part. Yeah, yeah. But it is a podcast yeah. because it is spread out, but I don't, I hadn't focused on that as much. So he's, uh, he's part of a group called Offline TV, mm -hmm. um, and he is the, he's, he's the director of, uh, the, of programming and, and production uh, manager for the group. But he knew a lot of the, the streamers, so, it, it, um, so they, were, they were doing eSports and some mm -hmm. other things, and he was in that in industry, and that's, that's how they all know him, and they, they pulled him in. And uh, so he produces, and stars in sometimes. He's, he's always behind camera, so you can always hear his voice. Okay. Uh, and sometimes he comes out uh, you know, in front of the camera and he'll be, he'll be showing. So Broden, finally in something similar to what you're doing. Uh, not, not, we're not doing one of those, uh, again, he does uh, something very close to, to the YouTubers uh, really? in terms of they do a lot of the fun skits the fun where, yeah, where they're talking. Right. And they're, yeah. Well, I want to get I want to get Beer someone I want to get someone like Broden. Your, yeah. your nephew's name Broden. Next time, yeah, next time he comes through, I definitely. I want to get someone like too. like you, Broden, to um, come in and help me with yeah. mine, so that we can get it to the stage to where we're having. Well, I have fun, but I want to have more fun, and I want it to pay for itself. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean that's that's what he does. So, he's, and and I was lucky enough to meet a lot of them when they were here. Uh, so actually, I do have a, a, a little claim to fame to one of their their their, uh, their vlogs. Really? Um, yeah, yeah that, that, that I took them to a baseball game, and so they they were the baseball game. Oh, that's uh, good. And I actually took them to TAC. How long ago was that? This is last summer. Oh, last um, summer. So yeah, they were just yeah, here. They were just here. Right after Corona started. To so why? Come yeah, out. just after it started yes. to calm down, and they uh, the Japanese government started allowing uh, tourists back mm -hmm. in with. A, you had to be part of a group. Right. Um, so he had a, a tour that he created for the entire offline TV crew, um, and they did a lot of filming while they were here. And I, I, I still think that there might be some snippets that they still haven't uh, put together. Put they did a lot of, yeah. Um, so if you look at the, the vlogs and some of the other members uh, of offline TV, uh, a, a lot of that part was in Japan, um, and I pop in somewhere in there. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look forward. I look forward to doing it. Niels, thank yeah. you so much. No, thank you. Thanks. 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 Glad we finally. I mean, I think you've you been did. talking to me about. I've been this talking for a to you about it. Time. You yeah. said, "I'll yeah. think about it." Right. You did, yeah. and now you're here. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. I want to thank all of you for watching this, and make sure those of you that are doing listening to the podcast continue to do so, and those of you that are watching this, make sure you press like and subscribe, and remember. It's all on loan, so continue to reach for the stars because you're too blessed to be stressed. <laughs>